Wickard, or Wickard, or however you pronounce this guy's last name. Hi there, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, Vintage Leaders. I'm Chloe G, and if you've been following my YouTube channel for a while, you know that I've been scratching the surface on the rationing system during World War II. And the name Claude R. Wicker just kept cropping up in my research, so I thought it was about time that I did a video on this rather obscure politician. Claude Raymond Wickard was born near Camden, Indiana on February 28, 1893. Against his father's wishes, uh, he went to college at Purdy University, graduating in 1915 with a bachelor's in agriculture. He returned to maintain his family farm, where he focused on modernizing the feeding and breeding of his pig operation. During the 1920s, he really focused on farming as well as becoming an advocate for rural farmers' uh, rights and was named the Master Farmer of Indiana in 1927. In 1932, he reluctantly ran for Indiana State Senate, winning on the very same day that FDR gained the presidency. In May 1933, the Agricultural Adjustment Act uh, went into effect, and being a farmer, Wickard was soon elected to the chair of the Corn Hogs Division of the Indiana's Triple A, as it was known. And then he was assigned the assistant to the chief of the Corn and Hogs division. In July of 1933, he was sent to Washington, D.C. as the second in, in command of that division, where he had to come to terms with the life of big city politics, and it, he was just overwhelmed with the job and never actually, unfortunately, really quite got economics. In 1936, he becomes the assistant director of the Triple A, and during this time he becomes known to FDR's Secretary of Agriculture, Henry Wallace, and during the 1936 presidential campaigns, these two men, Wickard and Wallace, go on the campaign trail, and Wickard just becomes indispensable to Wallace, and when they return from the campaign trail and FDR is re-elected, Wallace suggests to FDR that he gave Wickard the position of Undersecretary of Agriculture, which he is uh, sworn in in February 1940, after FDR has soundly, soundly vetted him. And he serves in that position for six months until September 1940, when Henry Wallace resigns his position to Wickard to become FDR's vice president. In 1940, we are gearing up for the Second World War, so Wickard has to grapple with how the agricultural department is going to provide food for the American military as well as our, uh, as well as our civilian population and much of Britain through FDR's Lend Lease program. He begins to ration American food supplies shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor and uh, really promotes farming as a patriotic duty. He became highly, highly a unpopular in January 1942 because he placed a band on pre-sliced bread saying that if the bread was banned, it would free up tools for the war effort. Much to American housewives' relief, that order was rescinded in March 1942. As Secretary of Agriculture, he had to fight military service as well as defense work to keep workers on American farms, and he highly, highly encouraged women and children to work in Indiana in canneries and on farms during the summers. 
In July 1942, he attended the second Inter-American Conference on Agriculture, and while he was there in New Mexico, he worked out a deal for importing Mexican farm laborers to America to help with what he saw as a labor shortage on American farms. He headed the war food administration as well as the office of price administration which dealt with much of uh, the American uh, food rationing. He resigned his secretary a ship under chairman to take over the chairmanship of the rural electrification administration which focused on gaining more rights for the rural farmer as well as modernizing American farming and he served until that post until 1953. Tragically on April 29th 1967 at home in Indiana Wickard ran a stop up sign and was hit and killed by an oncoming truck. Claude R. Wickard played a vital role in the rationing of uh, food during World War II, but I actually hadn't heard anything about him until I started researching this area of the war. So I hope you found this video informative as well as entertaining. If you want to learn more about important figures of World War II, I actually have a video on MacArthur and Patton and have plans to do future videos on equally important figures of our era. I will place a link down below in the description box to that video, and while you are there, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification and bell so you get all of my videos when they're published. Don't forget to follow me on the social media platform of your choice. I am on Instagram as underscore vintagely or 39. 45, as well as on Facebook, and my username over there is Vintagely Yours. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, and I'll see you in my next video, which will be a fun one. Bye!